this is Terry Cars. Welcome back. Welcome to I Have a Secret. And I would like to talk a little bit about the PDFs that you will find for this class. Before we move further on the, down the road and talk about how we're going to print these images and how we're going to use these images and have fun with these images, I would just like to take a moment to discuss artistic copyright. And I think it's important that we are all very clear on this. All of these images were made by me. They are my intellectual property. And I have chosen to share them with you because you're in my classroom. You may certainly take these images and change these images, recolor these images, resize these images, use these images in your art. You may take Pup in a Cup and put him on a library pocket um, that didn't look too great, but certainly against another ground, he looks terrific. Um, you may certainly take any of these images and use them in work that you are going to sell. That's fine. Personal work that you're going to sell. So yes, you may make cards using Pup in a Cup or the backgrounds or journals and sell them on Etsy, eBay, craft shows, art shows. That's fine. That's not violating copyright. What violates copyright is when you claim some of these images to be your own. And what also violates copyright is if you take any of this information, including the materials list, how to make the journal, and you either sell it for profit or distribute it in some way. That's a violation of copyright. We all want fluffy angel wings and we don't want to be breaking the law. So that's just a quick word about copyright and it's important that you know that and um, enjoy the images. Have fun with the images. I love sharing my images and my work. If you would like my permission, please contact me if you if you intend to do something other than use some of these images for your personal work, I would truly appreciate it. And um, that being said about copyright, I've done my legal duty, so let's move on. By all means, feel free to use these images. They're yours. You can size them if you have any type of photo imaging software or imagery, Photoshop, um, they're Corel, they're, they're a lot of different programs. So if you'd like, they're yours, resize them. We'll be using those. The other thing you'll find is that we have three backgrounds. Again, we'll talk a little bit more about printing them so that you get relatively the same quality as what you're seeing here. Just a word, because my printer and my monitor are calibrated differently than yours, there will be some slight variance, but that's okay because we're going to be adding different things and changing these backgrounds. So again, they're yours and joy. If you'd like to use another background, that's fine, but again, these are yours. Have all of your images printed. This will make life a lot easier. So when I like to work intuitively, and if I have to stop and cut something out when I'm in the middle of something, frankly, I find it to be a very big annoyance. I just like having my things cut out, ready to go, without any question. It makes life easier. And there are three backgrounds that I've given you. Um, the first, the second, you may have seen the second. Nice, I love that one. I love all the swirls. And um, this one. Okay, so there are three. Your choice, your journal. My suggestion would be use the template, use your cardstock, trace around it, cut it out. And all I've done is I have glued this. I glued my background to the cardstock to give me a nice sturdy substrate. So now I can take this, I can fold it, I can use my bone folder, I can use the back of a scissor and, and really get a nice sharp crease on that, which is very important. And I can also add different media to this. I can take, I can take a poster paint pen and I can 
put little dots on it. I can add watercolor to it using a brush. There are certain things that I can do to this and it will hold up because it's a nice sturdy substrate. The templates are important. They are integral to this I Have a Secret workshop. There are four and if you'll notice what I've done is I've also included a few shapes. I like adding interest and I've used hearts and stars. If you'd like, another look at the star, if you'd like, if you have punches from scrapbooking, please feel free to use them. This is your class. I know so many of us have materials that we've accumulated from uh, other interests. So again, if you don't have it, that's great. Feel free, clip these out, trace around them. They're yours, whatever you'd like to do with them. A word about printing the templates, in particular these four templates. I would like to suggest that you use a very heavy substrate. What I like to do is print my templates on cardstock. And it's plain old cardstock, you can get a whole ream of this stuff relatively inexpensively. I got mine from Staples. It's not an endorsement for Staples, um, but you can find it in any of the big box stores, Walmart. Lasts a long time and it's very media friendly. By media friendly, what I mean is that it will hold up to all of the mixed media that we so love. It will hold up to markers. It will hold up to poster paint pens. It will hold up to watercolor. It will hold up to oil pastels. It's very forgiving. You can do an awful lot to it. It's not bulletproof, but it doesn't wilt. I'd like to discuss um, cutting some of the templates out. I know that many of us reach for scissors. Uh, we get into the mood of things. It, it takes a little extra time, but it's well worth it to lay down a cutting mat and protect your table, to use a nice straight edge, a metal straight edge. They're not expensive. You can get them just about anywhere. My other suggestion is to use an X-Acto blade, a nice straight blade. And my suggestion, and this is a big tip that I learned many moons ago in art school, is change your blade, keep it sharp, make sure it's sharp, because if it isn't, as you go to cut your edge, you're going to see a scruffy looking edge and that's not what it's all about. The devil is in the details and if you take the extra time to use a metal ruler and a straight edge with a nice sharp blade, you're going to get nice, crisp, clean results. Especially when it comes to something like the library pocket. You want nice, straight, crisp edges. When it comes to cutting out your library pocket, you'll especially want something that's going to stand up to wear. And of course the tag, you'll want your tag to also be able to stand up to wear. And see, I've added a lot of media to this. This was actually a color copy, but um, the cardstock will maintain its integrity the same way. When uh, you add different material. So to this in particular, I have added, oh my God, I've added intense pencils, I've added acrylic paint, I've stamped, I've, you know, put oil pastels around it. I, I really threw the kitchen sink of media at this and it will hold up. So that's something to consider. Well, I think that pretty much says what I've needed to say about PDFs. I hope you've picked up one or two tips and hints before you leave. Don't forget to download um, all of your PDFs. Check them out. Also download the materials list and uh, the instructions for the journal. Regarding the materials list, just a quick caveat. Before you run to Michael's or Hobby Lobby or the nearest art store and spend, you know, a whole bunch of money on new art supplies, if you're an art journaler, I'm sure you've got tons of stuff laying around. Inks, pencils, watercolors, acrylics, crayons. It doesn't matter what you use. The important thing is that you have fun. So check that list. I'm sure you've got a lot of supplies before you run out to the store and spend a lot of money. 
The second thing is we will be making a journal and if you if you've got a journal that's great. If you don't have a journal that you would like to use, we will be making the journal. This is basically the skeleton of a journal. This is bare bones beginning journal and we'll be making this together if you so choose. So there will be a separate piece of video on this along with a separate materials list as well as the instructions. Keep that in mind. One last thing I'd like to mention is I feel that the printing element of this is so important. I've taken a lot of time to make these images and get this great depth of color that you so love. So I'd like you, if possible, to print these and maintain the quality of that print. And that means I want you to see when you print your pup and cup, I want you to see how green his eyes are. I want you to see the shading on the butterfly. I want you to see all of the tiny things and depth that's in all of the background papers. So there will be a separate video on printing. It's just very short, but I think you might find that helpful. And um, I think that covers all of the bases, pretty much. So welcome again to my classroom. Welcome to 21 Secrets. I have a secret and I will see you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching. Let's move on. Let's have fun. Bye. See you in the next video. Mm -hmm.